But what about O'Leary? Um, six. All right, so O'Leary got two things here. O'Leary personally kills anyone who threatens his business, family or business. Someone ordered Randall to commit these murders. O'Leary okay. wouldn't have sent Randall to kill Dunn. He would have dragged him to his basement, given him his little speech, and then killed him himself. Nah, I know O'Leary, and he wouldn't have sent a hitman. He would have taken matters into his own hands. What about Cassidy? Seven, right? Okay. So, Cassidy. Acts restless by impulse, okay. Uh, I don't know if he did it though. I think okay. it's safe to rule out Cassidy as Dunn's murderer. He seems too impulsive to have planned such a twisted crime. Whoever planned the whole thing knew the suicide theory would fall through. So he manipulated the clues to incriminate Yale. Cassidy is too impulsive to pull off such an intricate plan. So you're right. Mitchell is the one pulling the strings. So far. The audio completely just cut out. Nowhere everyone in the mansion where the suspect for the murder took place is a suspect. But that might just be an American who done it. The detective doesn't even meet the culprit until the last scene. I didn't get anything. No, it started out really well. As an interview her law with her boyfriend, Al Stone. Why is it looking into this? I don't know if that's supposed to be happening. <laughs> All right, let's try this. Let's just try reloading right here. So what you're saying is, oh, one, there's a corruption scandal involving all kinds of athletes. Two, our puppet master is a surgeon named Mitchell, a man who happened to fight in the war with Dunn, right? Yep. Every lead I've found points to him. Anyway, his, his tie just I? came down. Number his... three, right? Sure. Three, <laughs> since Dunn was on his trail, Mitchell hired an anteater to get rid of him. Then, since you were also shaking the wasp's nest, he went after you. But the anteater made a mistake, and Mitchell killed him to cover his own tracks. And, wait, four. The key to all this lies with a common friend of Dunn's and Mitchell's, Craig Spenow. Do you really trust him? I do so far. I think he didn't lie to us. Although he might not know the whole truth. Four. No, I mean, five. Dunn was murdered five, I mean, four days after taking Spenno to his house. If that doesn't make him suspect, makes sense, doesn't it? No, it doesn't add up. Why not? Just a hunch. Let's follow up with the suspects. You told Smirnoff that even though you're sure Yale is innocent, you think he's hiding something. But what about O'Leary? Um, mm. six. All right, so now we know O'Leary. Oh wait, wrong one. Uh, where's he at? O'Leary, there's that. And he personally kills people who threaten O'Leary wouldn't have sent Randall to kill Dunn. He would have dragged him to his basement, given him his little speech, and then killed him himself. Nah, I know O'Leary, and he wouldn't have sent a hitman. He would have taken matters into his own hands. What about Cassidy? 
Seven, right? All right, so Cassidy. Reckless by impulse. And he couldn't have planned it. Right, yeah, it was all carefully planned out. I think it's safe out. to rule out Cassidy as Dunn's murderer. He seems too impulsive to have planned such a twisted crime. Whoever planned the whole thing knew the suicide theory would fall through. So he manipulated the clues to incriminate Yale. Cassidy is too impulsive to pull off such an intricate plan. So, you're right. Mitchell is the one pulling the strings. Yeah. Okay. The audio just cuts out right here. Novels the murderer is always someone the detective knows from the beginning. Well, that could be the case in British novels. Know where everyone in the mansion where the murder took place is a suspect. But this might just be an American whodunit. Where the detective doesn't even meet the culprit until the last scene. Aha, <laughs> you mean we still don't know who's pulling the strings. I didn't say that. How to go with Helen Moore. I didn't get anything. Even though it started out really well. I asked her to interview her along with her boyfriend Al Stone. Since I'm a big shot, they were happy to oblige. Wow, Perfect. I should have just took it. Now, time for the interview. <laughs> I'll go back and forth so you don't get bored. So, who goes first? Uh, that's Gal. Here's a question for Al. Any thoughts on an upcoming fight against Yale? In just 12 days, the contender will try to steal your belt. Any thoughts on your fight against Yale? Uh, yeah, sure. My Al is going to kick that thug's behind. Isn't that so, honey? Yeah, well, we'll see. No such thing as a weak rival. Nonsense. You are and will be world champion. Next question. Okay, now. Ask Helen. Here's one for Helen. You ever fear that boxing will take a toll on Al's brain? The rumors are about. <laughs> what can you say about the rumors that claim you were in a relationship with Desmond O'Leary? Oh, honey. It would be such a shame to mention that shady character in your article, wouldn't it? Well, why? I'm sure your newspaper would hate to fire someone as talented as you. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. Moving on. Time for a picture. picture. How should we pose? Love birds. Okay, how about a hug? I want to feel the love. Move your mouse to the frame of the image. And press OK. Oh, navigate? It's not letting me navigate through this. Oh, there it is. Okay. You're the envy of all America. Now what? <laughs> uh, Al. So, Al. Manager to do compete. Your manager is Frank Cassidy, president of the Boxing Managers Association of New York. According to him, only boxers working with member managers should be allowed to compete. What do you think about that? Uh... We never talk politics, honey. Athletes should steer clear of controversy and stay focused on their sport. Don't you think? Yeah, that's right. Okay, one more question, and... Al, honey, can you answer it? I've got to go say hi to a fan. <laughs> I'll be right back, Mr. Pulitzer. <laughs> you mean she stopped smiling when that fan showed up? It wasn't a uh, fan. Yeah. Could you describe him for me? I'll be able to show you something as soon as I'm done developing these pictures. And actually, I thought it was odd, too. So while I continued to interview Stone, I managed to take some pictures of Moore and whoever her mysterious fan was. Ah, uh, that's why we're sitting in this room. Okay. All right. So uh, where were we? You ever feel jealous about dating America's sweetheart? Any thoughts on upcoming fight? 
Uh, Are you that ever jealous about sharing your sweetheart with America? Well, uh, I wouldn't say I'm jealous, but I know that someone so popular and honest can draw the wrong kind of attention. There are plenty of people who would love to put an end to her career, so it's not easy. So let's ask him. Your manager that. is Frank Cassidy, president of the Boxing Managers Association of New York. According to him, only boxers working with member managers should be allowed to compete. What do you think about that? Cassidy is a great manager, really. No complaints there. And the work he's putting in as president of the association is really valuable. But, I don't know, maybe in this case, Joe Dunn was right. Wait, no. Could you keep that last comment uh, off the record? You know, on the down low. My lips are sealed. Any thoughts? In just 12 days, the contender will try to steal your belt. Any thoughts on your fight against Yale? Well, supposedly the odds are in my favor, but there is no such thing as a weak rival. And, you know, Bobby Yale might be young and going through a rough patch, but he's had a, an amazing streak, so I'll do my best. Let's get that picture taken. <laughs> Let's see what you think about this. Close your eyes and rest your chin on your fist. The boxing thinker. Like these? Exactly. I didn't mean to do that, but all right, that works. Wait, I, I accidentally moved. Stand still. I'll take another one. What's with me today? Don't move, please. Now we got it. Should we keep at it? I'm going to take one more, all right? Raise your okay, head and one now raise your head and your arms up like you were celebrating a victory. Like these? Exactly. <laughs> What's up with me? Stand still. I'll take it again. I can't seem to get oh, it right. Oh, snap. Don't move. It was the iguana. It's about time. Finally, we're all set. Or it was well, he had the La Aquana. Wait. So, are you telling me the photos are developed, or is that what you said <laughs> to Stone? Both. Just look. Who's that guy? I know he's not a fan. You should have seen her face when she saw him. It's the lizard. You know. I thought he'd be cocky, but he didn't seem too convinced about beating Yale. Well, maybe he's got reasons to doubt. Look at his hand. Is he pulling something out of Moore's purse or putting it in? Moore and Mitchell. Something behind the cart. <laughs> Interesting. That's a decent picture, but it doesn't tell the truth. Huh? Of course it's the truth. I was there. Stone isn't as strong as he looks, and Moore certainly doesn't need him to lift her up. Look at his hand. Is he pulling something out of Moore's purse or putting it in? I think she only smokes when she's nervous. What was making her nervous? There it is. Hmm. It's the doctor. Wait, that's him. Who? Mitchell, the surgeon. Seriously? <laughs> we got him. Not yet. And then it's the La Iguana. Uh... I've seen that matchbox before. Focus, Black Sad. We need to figure out how to find that Mitchell guy. Hey, pal, did you hear what I just said? We need to keep looking at all those pictures. We need a clue that right will take there. us to Mitchell. Hey, see? There. Just like I was saying. <laughs> all right, sweet. So that was a pretty good clue. Um, we got a lot of good information from him. We know that Mitchell is talking with Helen Moore. Now we have some clues to make a new deduction.
their ear back. La iguana. Brawls aren't even the worst part of my job. Sure, you may take a beating, but at least you get the chance to defend yourself. But when you're sitting in your car all night, there's no way out. Your legs cramp up, your back and neck feel stiff, your entire body aches to be somewhere else. It's boring and repetitive. People were finally leaving the place. The bar was about to close. And I hadn't seen Mitchell go in or out. I had no choice. Time to go in. But he's gonna recognize us. Oh boy. I see you took me up on my invitation. And you're smart. You knew not to come until my anti-fur regulars had all cleared out. I can't say no to good advice. Or good bourbon. Mm -hmm. Here's looking at you, Mr. Uh, what was your name? As far as I knew, the iguana always stayed neutral. He played poker with Cassidy, but his joint was used as the gambling drop-off for O'Leary's operation. Did it make sense to keep faking it, or was it too dangerous not to? Farnham. Howard M. Farnham II. That's right. Howard Farnham from Ding Dong so it's to play it safe and carry on with the charade. You're natural. You're even better at pool than poker. Ah, uh, this here's much easier. No cheating. <laughs> <laughs> you barely flinched when Cassidy decided to teach that ego a lesson. What do you want a fella to say? I was too flabbergasted. I was too flabbergasted to be surprised, to be honest. These things don't happen in Texas. Tell me, what do you really want with Cassidy? I can't say it's clear to me. Damn it. Well, Texas. nobody's perfect. Texas boxing. I'm looking to start a boxing manager's association in Texas. I could really use Cassidy's know-how. Don't worry about it. I was only curious. So, what about me? What do you want from me? No one comes to La Iguana just to drink and play pool. I'm here looking for a regular of yours. Dr. Angus Mitchell. What for? That's between him and me. Uh, we fought during the war. We fought together during the war. I just wanted to say hi. Sure. Tell you what, I'll talk to Mitchell. Come back tomorrow night. You don't understand. I have to talk to him or else. Or else what? Tell Cassidy about your deal. I don't think Cassidy would be too happy about the role this here dump plays in old Leary's gambling operation. You follow me? Son of a bitch. Ha ha ha. All right. Give me your phone number, and I'll give you a call when Mitchell shows up. No. You're gonna call him right now, and you're gonna give him this message. But when you're sitting in your car all night, there's no way out. Your legs cramp up. Your back and neck feel stiff. Your entire body aches to be somewhere else. 
It's boring and repetitive. It's so bad that your thoughts spiral in a never-ending loop. Like when you're stuck in your car, on surveillance duty. The owner of La Iguana was supposed to tell Mitchell that a certain anteater was still alive, and that it was only a matter of time before he ratted him out. With a bit of luck, that would make him nervous enough to force his hand. Now all I had to do was follow him. Somebody's standing in the street. <laughs> and I think the, the world was unloading in the background. But alright, so now we gotta follow him. I don't know if we actually take control of the car or if it'll just take us there. We'll see though. Wondering what made them tell this story with like animals instead of just straight up using people. Jacket. Those horses. Gun. Come on. And his fingers on the trigger, dude. I think he's about to shoot somebody. Can we listen in what they're saying? Yep. We'll be just fine, don't worry. Gil, stand guard right here. If the cat shows up... Oh, he's a horse. You know what to do. <laughs> I'll be back in an hour. Gil orders him to kill me. Uh-oh. our approach here. Oh, oops. Could I take him by surprise from over there? Although I don't know how I'd get there. Gotta climb up somewhere. Over here. Think we can climb up there, maybe go through the door, or maybe even go up the uh, to the left right there. Let's see. 
Doesn't want us going up the steps, I guess. Oh, another card. How convenient. I'm not sure what the best route is here. Maybe we can use this forklift thing. Hold W, move forward, and S to go backward. Boy. <laughs> He's stuck inside of it. It's not supposed to look like that. That's funny. Oh, he just wants me to drive it over there? I guess... Yeah, that's true. I thought we were gonna build boxes to to get up there, but technically All we would need is to just put it up to be able to climb up top That's funny <laughs> He's sitting in it there we go, that's, that's how it's supposed to look. Make your own elevator. You made that look easy. up the ladder. Maybe we can get inside without jumping on him. I did mess up a guy's face with an extinguisher once, but this kind is too heavy for my current needs. What about the barrel? Or this giant, yeah. Nice. It's actually pretty good. Yeah, can I take his gun? <laughs> what? He saw that? Uh oh. I think he's I, I think he's good though. I am pretty sure.
Hmm. What does this place have to hide? Yo, his orders to kill me. All right. Well. Now he's knocked out. What does this place have? According to this, the warehouse belonged to a Canadian import company. It's a card right there. Okay. Uh, we can check the ladder, I guess. There's clock in, clock out stuff right here. I don't know, at the same time that kind of made a uh, good amount of noise. I don't know if that was the brightest idea. Ah, oh, shoot. No, I didn't mean to go down. Go back up. It's what? What the? A dream catcher. It's supposed to protect children during the night. Trapping all evil in its spider web. Ah. Attic full of Indian objects from the port of the it warehouse. It could be an Ojibwa totem pole. In which case, the top animal would be a crane. Whoops. If I'm not Check mistaken, this. these are incense sticks used in cleansing rituals. All right, let's check uh, our deductions here. We, I think we might actually have two. Now just one, okay. Uh, During the war, when it ends, and the case. Wait, what? Yeah, I don't really know. I don't see anything that says anything about. I don't know which two match here. They, I mean, like, they're all in reference to each other, but I don't know. I thought it was gonna be like a clue, like, oh, I, the horse is something, something Indian. I don't know, but there's one in here. Yeah, I'm kind of confused. Cause there's at least, there has to be at least one right now, but it wasn't even in reference to any of those. All right, we need to figure this out because it might be critical if you don't do it right away. Uh, I'm tired. Try to pair that. Surgeon, yell souls don't match. No, during the war, Dunn and his pals were known as the Olympic Five. All right, let's try this. Mitchell who fought That's with Dunn during the war, tried to pass as Yale's doctor. Yale's fake doc doctor.
I guess that was an outstanding one and it didn't pop up until I found that new clue. Maybe. There's a phone right help? here. Who would I call? Smirnoff? Uh oh. We can ask him at least. Pier 36. Meet me in an hour. Black sad. If you come in from Montgomery, it's the sixth sea facing warehouse. What's going on? And bring the cavalry. There's a glove. How are you gonna call him and tell him that before even like investigating this though? Okay. Nothing there either. You can try this one. So you need a key. Wait, can we look at the barrel? No. I'm not even trying to be stealthy. So loud. Open up this. Oh, he's in there. Don't you even <laughs> think of screaming. I might not even talk. It's so sensitive. I can't get there. We go. Jeez. It looks like an arrowhead. <laughs> the horse who works for Mitchell wears an arrowhead. Okay. And that act full of yeah. Everything seems to prove that Gil is a Native American, and I'm almost sure that the woman in the picture is his mother. Mothers always you know believe in their always sons. believe in you? Your mother. My mother never lost her faith in me. And I gave her plenty of reasons when I was a kid. It all started with something as stupid as keeping the change when she sent me for groceries. Then I started stealing fruit from the street stands. And finally, I turned to pickpocketing. Somehow, my mother managed to keep me in school until I got into college. But I never gave her reasons to believe in me then either. I made new friends. The type of friends that convince you to do things that wouldn't make a mother proud. Then Pearl Harbor happened. I got drafted and sent to Europe.
I never knew how to follow orders. They sent me back home with a dishonorable discharge. But when I got back, I was treated like a pariah, a veteran outcast who never should have come back in the first place. And yet, my mother never ceased to... In a spit. Oh, spit up a key. What the? I also fought in the war. That's where I met Mitchell. They used me, like many of my people. And then they just tossed us aside. Oh, snap. The first time Mitchell offered me to do this, I told him to take a hike. I wanted to get my act together, but I ended up begging him. I don't like Mitchell. I don't like the things he makes me do. Even though he I don't like skills. that German rat either. But what I like least of all is myself. Oof. I don't like what I did during the war, and I don't like what I'm doing now. Do you know what it's like to kill a friend for the sake of the mission? Huh. Oof. But my mother, she always thought I'd make amends and start anew. Maybe it's time I did just that. It's number three. Thank you. Number three. Okay, so put the key in there. And then press the button. Oh, snap. This is so much bigger than we thought. Like an entire submarine. Oh snap, he got in too. He's going to lock us in here. All these tapes. Hmm. Rundia. Put the tape in. Subject Brunhilde Gruner. Treatment, day 1,500. The patient's ability to speak continues to diminish. Now she can only pronounce the occasional word in German. Tissue degeneration persists. And yet, perhaps due to drastic reduction of benzoprodein dosage, and an increase of anupropion, we have observed a 3% of deceleration of said degeneration. Furthermore, and perhaps this is the best finding so far, the subject exhibits a mild recovery of her speaking. It's not a lot, and yet... We are on the right track. All hope is not lost. 
So they're doing medical trials. He's a German rat. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, these are the pills that they gave her. Helen Moore, Bobby Yale, Dick Armin, Carl Jenser, Bill Holt Goldman, Craig Spanow, Frank Copy, Alexander Mood, Julia Sulpic. Are pill bottles with athlete Oh man, are these steroids? I think these are steroids for all these athletes. A list of names somehow related to chemical agents? Yell on a pill bottle. List of names that somehow relate to rare chemical compounds. Do they make them like super, super animals? See Spano. Subject, Craig Spano. Treatment, de Siro. This subject is a veteran baseball player who has lost speed, strength, and agility due to the regular aging process. The patient refers intense pain on the right scapula, most likely caused by an old injury. The goals of our medical approach are twofold. To relieve pain caused by the prior injury so that the subject can play without symptoms and to help the patient regain the physical condition lost in the aging process, hmm. thus allowing him to perform at elite levels. Treatment. Day 120, the patient no longer feels pain when using his right arm, circumstance that allows him to pitch without fear. So far, the only side effect seems to be a slight euphoria experienced three hours after dosage, which subsides four hours later, taking the patient on an emotional roller coaster of sorts with bouts of mild trembling. Okay. Treatment. Day 341. Oh boy. Moments of euphoria and boosted physical performance have become increasingly short while the ensuing periods of depression and weakness have become longer, including severe trem. Although we have met all therapeutic goals, we will proceed to terminate the treatment. In order to avoid causing irreparable physical and mental damage to the patient. Oh man. So he was doing really well after it, but then it went away. Spano enhanced his performance using drugs. Spano's health took a toll after using the drugs. Blues can be... okay. Make a deduction. So... Let's see, Spano is that. That, and... That. Mitchell is cashing in by selling drugs to enhance athletes' performances. Let me guess when we try to leave. Uh -oh. Come on. Make another deduction. health took a toll and that the worst part of Mitchell's scheme 